on the schizophrenia, autism spectrum, and social cognition. I've been interested in the relationship between schizophrenia and autism for a couple years now, ever since my mom showed me an article that linked the two, and uh, also for several years longer than that because I had a friend who was diagnosed schizophrenic eventually, but in his own personal reflection and thought and study, he thought for a while he had Asperger's, which is a high-functioning autistic disorder, part of the spectrum of autism. And uh, I want to do a quick video on that relationship between autism and schizophrenia, and in terms of a uh, social cognition, which is important in both schizophrenia and autism spectrum disorders. Um, and one note on the term spectrum. Spectrum in this case means that schizophrenia in itself and autism in itself are wide range of symptoms, wide range of types of sickness, what happens, what features of the brain, features of the mind, what, what goes on in a person's life with schizophrenia or with autism is very different than other people with schizophrenia or autism. And the studies that came out a lot in 2008 and they're still coming out and um, is on the relationship between schizophrenia and autism, whether there's some kind of spectrum between those two spectrums. And anyway, so I'm gonna go over four facts and uh, then give you my opinion. I'll, I've written down a sentence or two and I'll just go off the top of my head after I read through some of this. So fact one, susceptibility genes and other studies about symptomatics link autism spectrum and schizophrenia spectrum disorders. That's pretty uh, clear what that means. Uh, what they mean by susceptibility genes in some of the literature I read is the what the genetics, the part of our code that m makes us susceptible for schizophrenia are some of the same genes that make people susceptible for autism. So the same genes in some, one of the chromosomes, I believe it was 22 when I read about it, is uh, related to predisposition to having autism or schizophrenia or whatever, however those genetic studies work, it's kind of a theoretical wishy-washy and really hardcore mathematical and statistical kind of study, so I don't want to talk about that more than I know about. Just that those genes and certain chromosomes whatever are linked to both these conditions so the same genes we know what I do know about genes is that they're responsible for traits and the unfolding development of the body and the cellular goings-on the generation of cells generation of our brain structures and all this the genes and are responsible for that anyway fact two schizophrenia spectrum includes deficits in social cognition. The tendency for schizophrenics is to be extroverted and other conscious, the, especially in paranoid schizophrenics who comprise a large portion of the schizophrenic spectrum. And uh, something that many schizophrenics, even non-paranoid schizophrenics, um, they have highly developed and compulsive thinking lots of thought, lots of social thought. One of the things I heard about schizophrenia was when I was early in the, my recovery or treatment period um, was that schizophrenics have a hard time in general when they're more acutely ill of having a, of knowing the, what a social idiom means. Uh, an idiom like people who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. 
something like that. That kind of social language is often hard to grasp or articulate for a schizophrenic, but in other ways, they over-articulate and overthink lots of other stuff in unique ways that are, in general, thought of as social cognition deficits, lacking ability to relate or socialize or have a different, it's like lots of schizophrenics in, in my own experience with schizophrenia, it was often like I was in a, my own world of thought and perception, but I was highly aware of the social external, even if I had delusions about it and it wasn't necessarily accurate or realistic. It was some kind of disconnect from social normalcy. Fact three, autism spectrum includes deficits in social cognition. The tendency is introverted and self-conscious. Um, my experience of autism is mostly through uh, the um, self-described experiences of autistics, like some of the YouTube videos that I've seen where an autistic person has um, found a way to use technology even though they might have difficulty talking with people in words out of the mouth, they have rich linguistic experiences and they have their perception, they describe their perceptions as meaningful and understandable to themselves, albeit they might be intense. And uh, they, in a different way than schizophrenics, have another kind of disconnect from social normalcy. And what's really paramount in my sort of perspective here is that the social deficits are kind of related, but they're also kind of very distinct. It's like hallucinations and delusions are very rare in autistics, and schizophrenics, heart and schizophrenia onset is much later in life than most autistic onset. So there's lots of differences, which leads to fact four. Objective observers and their theory do not know whether to make a connection or argue that they are completely different illnesses. Well, that's normal in this kind of field, uh, psychiatry and the idea of spectrum disorders, the idea of uh, broadening or, or extending diagnostic criteria and the, all the stuff that goes on in, in the PhD psychology world. Um, and just commoners, people who want to know what's the relationship, what's, uh, what's going on if I give these genes to my kid, I have schizophrenia, they might have autism, whatever. There's uh, concerns of what's going on in the human mind and the genome and all this stuff, the relationship, why what can we do about it? What can we learn from each of them? Like, uh, what can we learn from autistics and apply to schizophrenia or either way or what's going on? My opinion. The human mind includes a vast diversity of states and functions. Social cognition is probably the most unique, complex, and significant feature of our human existence. Social cognition regulates religions, governments, economics, family life, interpersonal relationships, romantic relationships, everything. And most mental illness is some kind of social cognition, some kind of mental cognition. But what's going on in the minds of different mental illnesses are unique 
to various brain regions that are identified with the parts of our human mentality that are disturbed or abnormal or aberrant, however you want to describe it. Um, the kinds of social cognition that I have are, when I read a description about autism and what it feels like to be autistic, when I hear the self-described reports of an autistic person who's talking about wanting to be understood, wanting to be accepted for being different even though they have trouble communicating, they want to talk about it, they want to share it, they want to have friends, they want to do all this stuff. My opinion is that diagnostic criteria are so broad because human inherent complexity is going to cover a spectrum of the whole human species. The whole human species is the spectrum of human consciousness. So insofar as schizophrenia is related to autism, we have to remember that schizophrenia is related to bipolar in the diagnostic, the diagnosis of schizoaffective disorder. We have to recognize that all sorts of stuff that happens to the human mind and brain are just unique manifestations of what is possible for a human mind to experience. The last thing I'll leave on is that what I think is the most troublesome is that people equate schizophrenia and autism with disorder. There is definitely a capacity in all individuals and in all ways of mind to experience disorder. Some people are bundled up wrapped up, dispositional, encounters of the same problems, the same features of the mind, the same opportunities for problems. It's not necessarily a problem. It's a bundle of social cognitive characteristics. It's a bundle of ways to be, ways to think, ways to experience. If you trust many of the schizophrenics who are healthy and many of the autistics who are healthy, you might have a different perspective of whether they're related or not. They might tell you, like I have, that it's just a way of being, it's just a way of feeling. Hopefully, it gets integrated and understood and accepted by society that we feel differently, that we need different things. Of course, we all know that the social, ecological, and political world of humanity has lots of issues. There's lots of social issues, there's lots of political issues, there's lots of ecological issues. So obviously, some people who are naturally disposed to more stressful states, more significant, intense states are going to be predisposed to disorder in a disordered civilization. That's my opinion on the link between autism and schizophrenia. We're different, we don't need to be ill, and we're kind of alike, too. Okay, that was a 15-minute video anyway. Tried to keep it short, but... I'm long-winded. Have a good one.